I feel so special being here. This is my first time for the Beams Conference, and right up front, I feel so special when I see Dr. Harold Gilmer, because I just have a BRO degree, that spells bro. So thank you, Dr. Fred. I feel very honored to be here. Now, you don't know me from Adam, so just to situate yourself to who I am, my complete name is Harold Ralph Gilmer. That Ralph is very important, that Harold as well, because when I was a freshman at Pensacola Christian College, very first class, passed the, passed the teacher, read off the roster, and he read Harold Ralph Gilmer, and he unknowingly said there must have been two happy grandfathers the day he was born. The joke was on him because I was named after my two grandfathers. Harold, my dad's father, and Ralph, my mother's father. My mother's father is Ralph McCoy, missionary Ralph McCoy, over 50 years missionary in Mexico, uh, founder of Mount Abarum Baptist Mission. You probably know my uncle, Mike Patterson. Uh, he is my cousin, Bob Patterson. He is Bill Patterson, I should say. Bob is up in Kentucky. Bill is now the president of our mission. So we have a complete ministry. We have both a Bible publication and a church planting ministry. This is one complete ministry I'll show you this morning, this afternoon. But my parents, Tom and Linda Gilmer, went to Brazil. When they arrived in Brazil, they were right up front caught the need of printing the Bible. So my father went to the Brazilian Bible Society and asked permission to print the Bible. And they said, we are preparing an ecumenical version of the Bible, and we are going to stop publishing the Bible as you know it, and we're going to force all the, both uh, Christians and Catholics to have one Bible. Well, there was a group of missionaries and pastors that were very concerned about that, so they got together and they had learned that Trinitarian Bible Society in London, which was founded back in 1831, had published the Bible. So they contacted them, and just three years after they were in Brazil, they founded the, two years after I should say, the Trinitarian Bible Society of Brazil. They sat down and realized they had to do a revision of the Portuguese Bible. And, you know, Dr. Gibbs talked about lacking, and this afternoon I lack. Today I lack, I lack an English Bible on me. I brought my Portuguese Bible. I came straight from Brazil for this conference, and I leave this Thursday. I brought just my Portuguese Bible, but I'm so glad I met Brother Ken Rustin. He's going to help me out. Brother, if you could open up your Bibles now to Luke, Luke chapter 8. I could read in my Bible, but it will be going back to the medieval days. You won't understand a thing of what I'm saying. So praise the Lord, somebody here that can, can read it for us. Luke chapter 8, a very familiar passage, but it outlines a Bible ministry. Verses 5 through 15. Brother Ken, if you could read that for us. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, in this passage of the sower, outlined for us a Bible ministry. First of all, he says, the seed is the word of God. So when you're going to go into Bible ministry, the first thing you got to do is to have the word of God. If you're going to a different language, like the Ukraine, you need to translate the Bible into that language. So we have a dilemma. What are we going to translate from? Are we going to go to the Latin Vulgate, or are we going to go straight to the Greek and the Hebrew? That is what Tyndale did. He went straight to the Greek and the Hebrew. That's the basis of our King James Bible. That's the basis of our Portuguese Bible as well. He went straight to the Greek and straight to the Hebrew. And not just any Hebrew, the Masoretic, not just any Greek, but the Texas Receptus. That was what was used by the church. All right. So now we have our basis of what we're going to translate it. Now, how are we going to translate it? Well... Uh, nowadays, there are all kinds of ideas of how you should translate it, but praise the Lord, Tyndale and all the reformers, they use formal equivalency, word for word. If you believe that God's word is inspired, you will, and inspired alike, you will use formal equivalency. All scripture is given by inspiration of God. In worst case, Pastor, I don't know Greek and I don't know Hebrew, well, then we do have good translations like the King James. We do have the Portuguese Almeida, but you have to go back and compare those to the original languages just to make sure that you got it right. That's called a daughter translation rather than a mother translation. In the English language, the King James Version, that is a mother translation. In the Portuguese with Almeida, that is a mother translation. So they got together, but they found out that there were other Greek texts, and they had tampered with Almeida's work. So they sat down, and Trinitarian taught them 
and they began what's going to be a one-year revision process that took 24 years until the entire Bible was complete in 94. But the New Testament was done in 1977. This was very interesting. For the first ones to start using the text down in Brazil were the Gideons. Praise the Lord, they still use our text till this day. It's an uphill battle, but they're still using it in Brazil. So we praise the Lord for that. And so the Bible came out. But here we see that the seed is for the sower. That includes tracts. So we publish tracts. We have partnerships with others who publish tracts. This is the sower. The sower goes out to sow the seed. And we have several ministries that we partner with to sow the word of God. We also provide for the Bearing Precious Seed. They provide the paperback covers. And this is my favorite here. I designed this myself. We had a client who wanted for his church. He wanted to do a personalized New Testament. He gave us this idea. I loved it and I did it. This is a New Testament. I try to give this out to every person that I come in contact with. Now, not everybody wants a copy of the New Testament, but everybody wants a copy of the Psalms and Proverbs. This is an undeniable gift. I've had only one person to turn this down, and that's another story in and of itself. But this is an undeniable gift. Everybody wants a copy of Psalms and Proverbs. This is the sowing of the seed, but some of this falls on hard ground. But then you have other that falls on good ground, and you have some that falls on stony ground, and some which fall on thorny ground. In these three cases, there was germination. That seed did start to grow. That is where beans comes in. What we supply for beams is every three months we send to about 80 missionaries in Brazil 18 Bibles. We send them six large print Bibles and we send them 12 of the medium print Bibles. We just had these special done for beams. These are of very legible type. When I was in college, I did graphic design and I asked my mother how I was going to use that in the ministry. She said, Don't worry, you will be able to. Well, I've been able to use it, and by God's grace, this is just as legible as a 1,300-page Bible, but we got down about 960 pages. That's that much less weight to, uh, to send out. Just as readable, we are able to produce these in Brazil, hardbound copies. If you get your little thing in the back here, and it says how much it costs to ship the Bibles out, here it says it costs sixty-four dollars. You can cross that out. We do it for sixty-three dollars. <laughs> oh, did I mention that the shipping is included? We get to do these for this year, six thousand Bibles for an average of three dollars and fifty cents. Beams is asking for about seven dollars a Bible. You know what that means? For every dollar that you give towards these Bibles, you're sending out two. Did you ever hear a story about a little boy who brought a little lunch? God is in the multiplying business, amen? amen? And that's what we're able to do with beams is help beams multiply what they do. But our passage continues because then after a person receives God's word, he needs God's word to grow. Brother, would you read for us Isaiah 55, 11, 10 and 11? Amen. Do you see the beauty of God's word? And in, in Luke, he compares God's word to the seed. Here in Isaiah, he compares God's word to the water that is going to make that seed grow. So somebody accepts the Lord Jesus Christ. What's the first thing you need to give them? A copy of God's word. You need to give them in God's house. It's in God's house they're going to grow. It's not going out to the parties on Friday and Saturday night. They need to get into God's word. And if you look at this passage, let me just point this out to you. This is very, very keen. Who are these who germinate, grow for a while, but when temptation comes, when the seduction of riches comes, fall away? Those are our children. Those are our young people. So many of our young people, they do not have roots in themselves. They, when the thorns come and the temptation comes, they fall away. But Beams is there to help these new converts, to help these children. In my church, 
We have, praise the Lord, we're starting a new congregation now. We have a lot of children who are coming and are accepting the Lord. What's the first thing those kids are getting? A copy of God's word. And they're coming to church with their copy of God's word given to them through beams. God's word is the water that's going to help that seed to grow. So we need to get the seed right when it's the tenderest, as soon as it's budded. That's when we need to come in with beans. That's why beans are so important, because it gets it right when it's the tenderest and allows it to grow. Beans gives hardback copies because they want to make sure people want to use these, and they're going to grow with these Bibles. But it talks about the good seed. Then, as a person starts to grow into God's Word, all of a sudden he wants his Bible. And that's where we kick in as well. My little son last year, when he saw this Bible that I published, I had to get it for him immediately. This was on a Canadian paper. The next printing will be on uh, Thinland paper, which will be thinner. But it's a good-sized print. When he saw this, he said, Daddy, I need this. So I got it for him. We also we think of each person with everything that we do. This is my wife's Bible. This is a small, medium, fits well in your purse, but it has... 12 point type, very legible. So ladies, this is the most legible in Portuguese. If it was in English, I'm sure I'd be selling some today, but these are all in Portuguese. Then this one here, this is Giovanna's Bible. She accepted the Lord and her mother and father came to the church. So I gave her this Bible here. She even seen it coming to church. She is so happy with her little pink Bible. We just had our 50th anniversary. So this is our 50th anniversary Bible. Pastors are loving this because it's so thin, so easy to carry around. It's what we use for beams as well. This one here was done for young people. I did this cover for me. I like the black lines. When my parents, they're in their 70s, when they saw this Bible, they opened it up. They hated it. This one has got it's good size print, but not for an elderly person. It has references. When they saw this, they hated it. I said, close the Bible. I didn't make this one for you. This one's for young people. When my nieces saw these, I had a special delivery to them. They were so happy with their female cover, and it was made for young people. This is just a plain, classic Bible. I want a Bible. This is Ramon's Bible. Ramon is who I buy water from, so I gave him this Bible. This is just a plain, classic Bible. We have a program that we're using for... Uh, teaching the people how to read and write through the Bible. We did this especially for them. It's got a good size print. It's got some little things they asked for to teach people how to read and write through the Bible. This one here is like my Bible. I'm in my 40s, so this is made thinking of me. In my eyesight, I'm now using multifocals. This one here is thinking of my mother. When my mother saw this Bible, she was so happy. She said, always have this Bible in print because it's got the giant size print. We have an even larger one in print that we're preparing to print, I should say. And this one here is for pastors. This one here, um, Pastor Zach, we work with. He's had his birthday. I gave him one of these. He was so happy. And it's the leather one. This is printed in Korea. It's, it's got that leather smell to it. But the point is, I don't see Bibles anymore. I see people's names. This is Brother Zach's Bible. This is Ramon's Bible. Pastor Dell uses this to teach people how to read and write through the Bible. This is my mother's Bible. This is George's Bible. He loves this Bible. He's a pastor. He loves this Bible. This one here. I already told you about her. She loves this Bible, taking this every day to school, to church. My wife's Bible, my little boy's Bible. And my question to you is, whose is this Bible? Whose is this Bible? Whose are these Bibles? And how are they going to get them if we don't ship them to them? That's where you come in. Thank you for your ministry. I'm Brother Tim Gordon. This is my wife, Carla. We've been in ministry for 33 plus years. Met in church when we was 12 years old. Now we're going to India. And uh, the Lord has granted us 10 year visas to go to India. We're going to Andhra Pradesh in the mountains, 10,000 villages, uh, 30 Baptist churches. They have no written language. So we're going to teach them English and buy a King James Bible for $2. And English is one of the official languages of India. And so, Lord willing, in August, we'll be in India. 
tell, tell, tell them what, 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 the, what the churches can do for you. Pastors. You can give us money. <laughs> and uh, we'll go before August. Uh, but until we teach them English, you know, uh, they don't have a written language, so a Bible won't do anybody any good. So we'll be preaching through translators and teach them English. So you can pray for us. We have prayer cards over there. Uh, pray for us. Uh, most of, uh, we're booked up through July, and the Lord's done that for us. And so if you want to book us, it'll be years down the road. But, My name is Pastor Dan Kagan, Lighthouse Baptist Church in Norwalk, Connecticut. Many of you know my wife, Carrie Sewell Kagan. 1990, I moved to Connecticut to pastor the church. In 2007, I needed a hip operation, and I went to India for the operation. They did the hip replacement. When I was there in the hospital bed, I did like Brother Gibbs said. I asked God for wisdom. What can I do to help these dear people who've been so good to me. And God put it on my heart to minister to the people of India. I can't be a pastor there, but I can finance young pastors who are there. And right now, uh, we have four pastors there that we have their monthly support. We take care of that. We have bought two pieces of property. We are building an orphanage. Uh, this is what we do with the money that comes into our ministry. One pastor is building a two-story school, house, and a church all in one. He's about halfway through. And as you know, Carrie has been working in Mexico now, and all these years uh, she has been sending Beams Bibles all over Mexico. And we were just there last week, and they had a conference, gave away over 800 Beams Bibles at Brother Tommy Ashcraft's church. And we love it very much, and thank you for supporting us. I am Lee Carter. I uh, grew up in Kansas City. I've been saved for about 25 years and have been in the ministry for 20 of them. Um, Bobby Bonner uh, poured into me for two years in Kansas City and then God moved my family and I to Decatur, Alabama. I've been on staff there for four years now. Um, and at this point, we will be leaving in November, my family, um, for the Dominican Republic. We've been working there. Over the last four years, taking anywhere from five to seven trips a year, we've established a training center in three different locations in Santo Domingo, which is the capital. And uh, what the training center does is the pastors that have young men who have the calling on their life for church planting, it allows them to be trained, not just in knowledge, like what we were hearing today, but in application and understanding and going out and doing it. And so over the last four years, we've seen over 300 house churches planted. Um, God is moving in the Dominican Republic. There's an opportunity there for partnership with us. We would love to be able to sit down and share the vision with you. Um, partnerships, it can include giving, it can include going, and it definitely includes praying. So, and those are the three things that we need. Uh, my name is Caleb Nichols. I'm with Fundamental Baptist Books under the category of Church Helps. Uh, I was saved when I was nine years old, a little town in Maryville, in Tennessee. Uh, I'm out of uh, Victory Baptist Church in Greenfield, Indiana. Uh, our ministry's uh, main goal is to provide King James Bibles and to be, as many, get, them at, get as many King James Bibles out as possible. And to provide churches with the resources they need to train up the next generation of Christians. Uh, we include, uh, you know, we have, offer uh, hymnals, devotionals, Sunday school materials, study books, and a lot more. Uh, we also help churches go out soul winning, and uh, whenever we're at churches, we help out any way we can, whether that's a singing, filling the pulpit, or just anything the church needs. I'm Alvin Roberts. This is my wife, Sharon, and we are Beams Missionaries Representatives. I uh, have been uh, mostly working in New Mexico and, uh, and the Texas Panhandle, 
But since she agreed to be my wife, she convinced me to move to Missouri. I mean, Missouri. <laughs> so we'll be breaking up new territory, and we'll be working in Missouri, Kansas, Nebraska, Iowa, Illinois, any place in the Midwest. And so if you'd love, love to have a missionary come, Beams representative, we would love to come and share what Beams can do for your family missionaries. John McElroy, my wife Cindy. She's the 75% of the team. Uh, she's the one that bubbles. Uh, I don't. <laughs> but we share Texas with Brother Don, uh, Brother Don Smith to be here in a little bit. We're going to be sharing New Mexico with uh, Brother uh, Alvin that just was here. And then we also have Arizona, Utah, and Colorado. And we need help. We need some people that will come and help us with beans. Because there are missionaries, and as you heard repeatedly, there are people around the world that don't have the Word of God. And we'd like you to help us help them. I'm a brother Ray Dombeck, and I'm a Beams missionary, and I work up in Ohio, Pennsylvania, and parts of the Northeast, and, and I, I do these chalk art sermons that helps me get in churches so that I can present the Bible ministry, and, and up in those parts, there's a lot of wide-open territory where you get in churches and never heard about Beams. Well, today I mentioned to you about, about his... Uh, Chalk Talk, and if you've not had him in your church to do a Chalk Talk, I promise you, you'll be thrilled, and you'll be blessed. He's one of the best that I've ever seen. And you, you watch him as he preaches, he, he, he draws that Chalk Talk, and then he turns the light on, and it just comes out at you. <laughs> Dave, brother, we're glad to have you as part of the Beams team. I'm glad to be part of it. Amen. Thank you. Okay. We're Don and Pat Smith. We're kin to Adam and Eve Smith. <laughs> we cover Texas and Oklahoma, and uh, we're, we've down, been down with Kerry in Mexico twice now. And uh, we, I, for 35 years, I worked for the Department of Defense, and I ran their retail stores. So we moved 15 times, lived in four states and three countries, and I met a lot of pastors and a lot of missionaries, so we basically go where we're invited, and we've been in eight states so far in five countries. We spent three months in Okinawa, Japan, two years ago, and I was preaching in a military church, and we had about 300 there, and they're now scattered all over the world. And I said, the best thing you can do for me is just tell every church you go to about beans. And I'm getting emails and uh, Facebook requests, and so we just continue to go. You keep on going until you can't go no more. Uh, what can you do for us? Invite us. Uh, we'll come tell you about it. We'll treat some men different ways. You're bound to like one of them. And uh, the most important thing is we're all on the same team. Uh, we want to send the whole Bible out to the whole world. And uh, how we do that is just one Bible at a time. We say down in my part of Texas, God bless y'all real good. Hello, my name is Bobby Bonner. I've been a missionary to Zambia, Africa since 1988, uh, six years ago because of my health problems, came off the field for a little while, and I've uh, been the associate pastor out at First Bible Baptist Church in Blue Springs, Missouri, but still the president and co-founder of International African Missions. Uh, when I was in Zambia years ago, I thank God for Brother Ferret for the Beams Ministry the tens of thousands of Bibles that you've sent to us to be able to give to our people and uh, being able to be on that receiving end of what you guys hardly ever see. Or if you've gone, maybe you've seen it. But like Brother Ferret, when that man showed up after a four days journey or two men bicycling over 500 miles one way and falling on their face and begging us for a copy 
of the Word of God. And so uh, I'm just so thankful for the Beams ministry, for Brother Carr and all of you and you pastors that give uh, so, so willingly, so generously for the Word of God. Amen. The Word of God changed my life. Just changed my life. If it wasn't for the Word of God, I don't know. First of all, I wouldn't even be born again. I'm born again by the Word of God. I, like what Brother Roloff said uh, years ago when he preached the message, don't talk about my mama. He said, I, w- I was birthed through the Word of God. I'm begat through the Word. And so I'm so thankful that uh, my wife gave me the Word uh, back in 1978. And I've never got over Jesus, as Brother Fred said. And I'm so thankful he's never got over me. You know, the prize fighter, when he's in that fight, you know, and he's going, he's not the one that throws in the towel. It's the manager. And my God's been managing me ever since I got saved. And it ain't over, as Yogi Berra said, till it's over. And so I'm so thankful that God's been able to raise me back up. And now I'm back out on the road again. And uh, uh, looking forward to seeing our men in Africa. We have over 300 churches in five different countries. Uh, We have five training places where we train church planters. I just got a message from one of our men, Douglas Sakawaha, who just uh, completed the training of his 13th pastor. He started 13 churches himself as a national church planter. And so uh, I preached a long time ago that if Africa is going to be reached, it needs to be reached by Africans. If Brazil is going to be reached, it's got to be reached by Brazilians. If Mexico has got to be reached, it's got to be reached by Mexicans. And how are they going to do that unless somebody goes and wins them to Christ and disciples them and trains them and turns the ministry over to them? And how are we going to do it without this? So I'm so thankful. So. Uh, pastors, again, I'm, uh, you know, you get a chance to love to come in and edify your people. So if you get a chance, love to come and see you and be a part of it. Love you, brother. Love you, brother Bobby. We would like to tell the folks that brother, uh, brother Bobby, when he got saved, he was a professional ball player for the Baltimore Orioles. He was shortstop. God called him to preach. He resigned his baseball career. And uh, who took your place? Uh, it took a guy by the name of Cal Ripken Jr. to take my place, okay? Somebody, well, I'm just a legend in my own mind, okay? So, <laughs> maybe, maybe they've heard of him. Maybe, maybe, maybe. But, anyway, I, but I know Dr. Fred. Amen. I, we, we've shipped thousands of Bibles over there in Zambia, Africa. And what I liked about his ministry over there was that he started a church. Then he trained a national, and he turned that church over to that national and began to train others and trained over 300 preachers. How many? Yes, yes. Over 300 preachers been trained and going out and start. And I like I like I like what he did. Amen. And we supplied thousands of Bibles Amen. for that work. Thank you, good brother. To have you Love here. you, man. Love Amen. you too, my friend. God bless you. Amen. My name is Ken Rustin, and I'm with uh, Vision Ministries International. And looking out at you this morning, it makes me nervous. I'm not used to having people in civilian clothes sitting looking back at me. Most of them are wearing stripes. <laughs> Amen. Well, God's been good to us. He's founded Vision Ministries. We've been in the ministry 25 years. And we have a, a women's ministry. and We have a men's ministry. We're in the local jail in town every week. We're in the state prisons. We travel abroad 13 years in Peru in the terrorist prisons. Spent five years in Honduras and about three years in uh, Haiti all over the United States, so we're getting ready to go to the uh, Eastern Front in the Ukraine and carry the gospel over there. So we pray, for, we ask for your prayers. i tell you, yesterday's meetings, uh, I laid in bed last night thinking about the messages that we heard, and I was thinking about the impossible. <laughs> you know, with God, it ain't impossible. I was thinking of the Spirit of God, and a verse came to me, personally, and it was in Genesis, the third chapter in the ninth verse, and Adam and Eve had fallen away from the grace of God, and sin had entered, and God came into, and they hid themselves, and God came in the still of the night, and he said, where art thou? Amen. <clears throat> I had to ask myself that. It's not like you can hide from God, but God it's not that I, he knows that I'm here. He knows that I'm on the coast of Mississippi, in the state of Mississippi, in the United States of America, in the northern con- uh, continent, on planet Earth. 
But he's asking me, where art thou? He knew where they were, but where are we in our relationship with him? Are we taking the word to the people that need it? I want to share one experience with you about taking some Bibles. We took Brother uh, Brother Butch Locker, excuse me, <laughs> took him, and, and we've also taken Brother Rene Ferret, and I've asked you to pray for him today. Uh, took them down to Peru with us, to the prisons down there. The first time we ever went down there, we only had enough room in our suitcases for 33 Bibles. That's all we had. And we went down there, and we went to the prison at Santa Monica, and it's a women's prison, and they had the women terrorists in there. And we happened to, upon the auditorium, and in the corner, there were some ladies over there doing a Bible study. Now, all they had was one Bible amongst all those women. And it happened to be the day that they were graduating. And this teacher came to me, and she said, would you present them with this little makeshift diploma that they had made for them? And I said, oh, I'd be so honored to do that. <clears throat> and I asked her how many ladies were in that group. She said, we have 33 women. And I said, praise God. <laughs> so we handed those Bibles out. And I heard Brother Renee Fred mention this the other day. But those women would take those Bibles and hold them to their chest and praise God for them. And they'd kiss them. And they thank you for them. They've never had a word in their house. You know, I've got four or five copies of God's word in my house. And I tell you, I'm just so blessed. But there's people in the world that need beams and need the word of God. And it's, you know, where art thou? What are we doing about it? It's a challenging question. Thank you. Isaiah 32, in verse number 20, says, Blessed are they that sow beside all waters. My name's Cecil Fayard. Grew up here on the coast and then was gone for about 40 years in the Air Force, pastoring churches for 35 years. And then the Lord called us back down here to go on board cargo ships, pipe-laying ships, and get the Bible in the hands of people who come to this country from all over the world. And so we are sowing the seed among all people. So far in the last seven years, we've reached 71 countries without leaving the Gulf Coast. We work the coast from Mobile to Jacksonville. We also work in Theodore, New Orleans on into Port Fouchon, down yonder. And it's a wonderful thing to see people who are hungry for the word, such as the Chinese, take a Bible and stand there and read and read and read and read. I asked a Chinese fella, I said, the Bible that I gave you yesterday, what did you do? He said, last night I read until I go to sleep. And the Bible was on his chest. Polish, German, Pakistani were able to reach them on the ships where you couldn't go and reach them easily anywhere else. They'll take it. They'll read it. There's not the peer pressure. Pray for ship to shore regions beyond out of the Elliott Baptist Church in Elliott, Mississippi. Appreciate your prayers. Larry Pierce. I'm a missionary with Armed Forces Baptist Missions, mining to the military, um, mainly reaching veterans here that are struggling with post-traumatic stress. Um, I first come across Armed Forces Baptist Missions at a mission conference over at Bloodshot River Baptist Church, looking, reading their missionary letters there, and one of their missionaries was with Armed Forces Baptist up there in Barksdale, the Mahamies. And so when I got home that night, I, I wrote the address down, the web address, and went on. And in a couple of weeks, about a, probably five or six days, Dr. Carringer, the general director, gave me a call. And invited me to come up to his, the conference up at Greenville, South Carolina. That's going to be at Morningside Baptist Church. 
and also did my my interview with him also. And in June of 2015, I was at Camp Joy for a candidate school and accepted there, and they pinned me as a missionary. And my sending church is Grace and Truth Baptist Church over in Moss Point. And and to make kind of a little short thing here, he told us about a, a young lady that sent a veteran a Bible, one of the Bibles, and one of his books to a veteran in the VA. And the director of that VA called him up and asked him what they were supposed to do with this. He said, well, they meant for you to give the Bible and the book to that soldier. And then he calls him back later in a couple of days and asked him, they said they give it to him, what did y'all do to him? We said, we ain't done nothing. He was on his bed, on his knees at his bed there, praying and asking forgiveness and confessing and got saved and said he never had to, we always had to give him kind of medicines here. And we didn't have to give him no medicines. He slept for 12 and 14 hours. So God's word works. And through PTSD, it's treatable and curable with his help. This is a new experiment for us to, to uh, have missionaries to come forward and share their ministry. And we certainly want to give them as much time as we can. But we'll have to hold it down until... You just tell us who you are and where, you, where God's called you to go and what uh, the churches can do to be a blessing to you. For time's sake, if you could help us with that, I'd appreciate it. We want everybody on this section right here to stand. If you're a missionary or working in mission work, and if you will, come on right over here on this side. Brother Tommy, would you lead us in a word? Come on up and lead us in prayer, please. Tommy Miles, he was a member here at our church, and now he's going off to pastor. We've sent him into the pastor. Brother Tommy, we're thankful for you. Lead us in prayer, if you would. Amen. Let's talk to the Father. Father, what a joy it's been just to meet with some of your folks. Father, hear the preaching of the Word of God. I'm glad that I can still go to a place. People will just rear back and preach. Father, I pray that you'll help us to take all that we've learned and all that we're going to learn and use it for your honor and your glory. Father, I thank you for each one of these missionaries that are spending some time this afternoon to share their mission field with us. Father, I pray that you'll give us pastors a desire to help them to lead our churches to be more mission-minded. Father, we might fulfill the commission that you've given us. We love you. Thank you for your grace and your mercy in Jesus' name. Amen. Kim Weaver, I'm a missionary in Ecuador, South America, and my wife and I have been there for about six years. She's up in North Louisiana with her mom. Today we are... uh, I don't know what to say. I mean, I don't have no prayer cards. I just went to a mission field. God told me to go, and so that's what we did. We don't need no support. We just need a lot of prayers. And uh, if you're interested, though, in investing in a ministry, you know, we take 100% of what people give to us and invest it in the Lord's work. Amen. All right, give you my name, Harold Ralph Gilmer. My wife is Lydian, and we have Raphael and Danielle, and we are in biopublication in Team Church Planning there in Brazil. Pray for us. Every time I tell my wife that somebody's praying for us, I get an email saying someone's praying for us, she literally cries. So pray for us. I'm Randy Freeman. This is my wife, Lynn. We're going to be missionaries through the Beams Bibles in Louisiana. What you can do to help us, if you know somebody in Louisiana that's pastoring, or a church, let them know about us. If you need information, you can call the Beams office, and they'll tell you how to get in contact with us. But please pray for us, and if you have any contacts, that would really be a big help to us because we're trying to 
get as much money together for beams to buy Bibles and send Bibles to the mission fields. So please pray for us. Good afternoon. My name is Larry Brinker. I am a missionary evangelist and missionary pilot. Uh, our theme verse is Ephesians 5.16, redeeming the time because the days are evil. Our focus in the ministry is threefold, evangelization, transportation, and then instruction. We do ask you to please be in prayer for us. We are seeking support, and, but especially we need the power of God on the ministry. And if anybody wants to donate an airplane, we're up for that too. Amen. Yeah. Keith Reinheimer, my wife is not with me this time, but we are missionaries with Fundamental Baptist Worldwide Mission in Memphis, Tennessee. After spending eight years in Mexico, coming home for our furlough, my wife got sick and needed a liver transplant. She was doing very well, but the door was shut to go back to Mexico, so we were working in the home office of the mission agency, which is a ministry of Eastside Baptist Church in Memphis, Tennessee. We do not send missionaries to the field. That's the job of the local church. Our job is to help you as pastors send your missionaries to the field more effectively. We have some literature out there, a free book for pastors. If we can help you in any way, stop by and see us. Amen. My name is Steve James. My wife Pam and I are missionaries to Cuba. Uh, we've worked in Cuba since 1999, thankful for all the Lord's been doing there. We had to leave Cuba after winning about 100 folks to Christ uh, and beginning to disciple them. One man called to ministry. Uh, we saw the Lord doing some amazing things and had to leave in mid-2001. Came back to the States, started a Spanish church in, in Cincinnati. Had worked at that until 2014. Uh, began transition there because I got an email from Cuba from the young man that we had begun to train for ministry. And again, short period of time, but we were able to see God do, doing a great work in his life. And uh, he sent, emailed us and began to tell us what God had been doing in Cuba. He took that infant uh, work that we had started with, and it was three churches when he contacted me, and we could only rejoice in what God was doing. And uh, so we began the transition of the Spanish church in Cincinnati because God was working in our hearts and lives to go back to Cuba. And so we ask you to pray for us. We ha our ministry is threefold. We want to evangelize. We're working on seeing as many folks saved as we can, as, and uh, we're discipling those who get saved, yep. and then leadership training, and seeing folks, seeing men trained within the gospel ministry. Our goal is to see churches planted across the nation of Cuba. Amen. Please pray for us. Thank you. Hello, my name's Clint Tackett, and uh, I'm a sinner saved by grace. Um, God has called us to the CLAIM ministry. CLAIM stands for Christian Layman Assisting International Missionaries. CLAIM's purpose is to identify a building project need that a church planning missionary, that a pastor, uh, that a uh, church camp might have. And then my job is to assemble a team of lay people, pastor, from your local church to go with me and, uh, and do a building project. So this does a couple things. Uh, this eliminates a huge expense for the, the missionary. We're talking anywhere from ten to twenty thousand dollars per trip. We help save these missionaries, and it gives your people the opportunity to use their talents that God has given them that they typically wouldn't be able to use at your local church. So we're on deputation. So uh, if you're interested in our ministry, we'll be at our table. I really uh, would appreciate uh, maybe you considering having us in and let us present. Um, so but you can just pray for us or for safety as we put thousands of miles on our vehicle every month and uh, from state to state to state. So uh, I just thank you for the opportunity to be here, and uh, God bless you. Thank you my I'm Elvis Sneed, and this is my wife, Wanda. We're with Light in the 1040 Window Ministries uh, out of Mount Pleasant, Arkansas, Cornerstone Baptist Church. Uh, we work in the area of the world called 1040 Window. It's where two-thirds of the world's population lives, 90% of the unevangelized of the world. We focus primarily on planting churches in areas where they have never heard a clear presentation of the gospel, and there are literally millions in that part of the world who have never heard. 
And so what our needs are is simply this, uh, that we like to be in the, have the opportunity to come into churches and to just share the opportunity of being involved in reaching people with the gospel who've never heard. I was saved when I was 24 years old. I pastored for 38 years in North Arkansas. I've uh, gone through struggles and things and problems, things I didn't understand, things I didn't like, just like all of you have. But I can tell you this, since I got saved at 24, I have never looked for another Savior because the Savior that I serve satisfies my soul, and we'd like to be able for everybody to have the opportunity to know our Savior. Pray for us, and if we have opportunity to come in and God leads you, we do not raise support for ourselves. Everything that comes in in monthly support goes to help those nationals reach their own people. God bless you. Good afternoon, I'm Rick, and this is my wife Nancy with the Montez, going to Central Latin America and the Caribbean with the proposed ministry, ship ministry called the Gospel or the Mercy Project. We are here just asking pastors. We are fully supported, but we're asking pastors to help us to take a ship called the Mercy Vessel. It's just a vehicle to take Bibles, to take medicine, to take the gospel, to take medical relief, to help the people in these areas. It's important that we take the gospel because as I was in the military, serving our country for 20 years, I was in a lot of times in Central and Latin America, Panama, with the 82nd Airborne Division and also in these countries, in Nicaragua and all those places. We saw the devastations there, we saw the countries and they needed our, our help as, as America. But now they really need our help because they need the gospel. Yeah, right. The children right now in these countries are opening and they want the Bibles in their schools. We were there for eight months and they have the Bible once a month reading in their schools right now. That used to happen in America. In Panama, Right now, once a month, they open the Bible. But guess who's reading the Bible, who's teaching the Bible? It's a Catholic person. It's a Mormon teacher. We need the help of beams to help us. And we want to carry the Bible so we can have the national pastors to go into the schools and teach the little kids the Bible. We need to help and carry the Bible so that Kids and families will have the Bible in their home so they understand what salvation is. We're getting the gospel because when they come and they receive the medical help, we give them the gospel and they get saved, and we're using the national pastor that they give and they disciple the people. They have a written contract with us that they are going to disciple. With the eight months that we stayed in Honduras, we work with 20 national pastors, and, and also we have five ports there ready to go to receive the ship. And the need that I need with the pastors here is to help us to get the Mercy's Vessel funded with fuel and also to help us to get it to these countries. And that's the need that we have right now is to help us to get it there. And that's what I'm asking your help. Thank you so much for the opportunity to be here. And thank you, Pastor Farrett, Brother Farrett, and also Pastor Kuhn for giving us the opportunity to be here with you this week. Thank you so much. We have this row uh, right here. If you would stand and prepare to come on down here, please. Amen. I know how the missionaries are being a missionary. You want to just take as much time as you can and tell as many stories as you can. But for time's sake, we, 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 we don't have much time right now. So come on, preacher. All right. This is Tony Stark, missionary to East Africa. East Africa, okay. The yeah. whole 
My wife and I have been in the ministry since 1975, pastoring and uh, church planning. Uh, we went to Uganda, Africa in 1990 and been ministering there. And most recently, we're in Rwanda, the country of Rwanda. God's given us a, a plan to establish 11 uh, independent Baptist churches strategically in major cities. And uh, we believe that if we establish Acts 1-8 churches, they can reach their Jerusalem, then their Judea, then their Samaria, and beyond that, and the country of Rwanda can be reached. There are two independent Baptist churches there right now. And I ask you to pray for the seed to fall on good ground and bring forth fruit. I ask you to pray for more nationals to train to be pastors. And I ask you to pray for me that I'll be filled with the Holy Spirit. So Tony, so start. Are you traveling now to churches? I know you're busy yes. going back and forth. Yeah, we we'll go back and forth, but I travel some. You're available? Won't yes. You tell, tell us, tell, tell, the, tell the preachers here that you're available. Yeah, I'm available. <laughs> I'd be glad to come to your church and tell about what God's doing in Rwanda. It's exciting, and uh, I've got some prayer cards right back there. Be glad for you to have one. Give you a little map, show you a picture of Rwanda and those 11 key cities and what God's doing. Appreciate the opportunity. My name is Sonny McGuffey, and this is my wife, Diane. We are missionaries to Nigeria, West Africa, and uh, we've been there uh, off and on about three years now full-time. Uh, we like uh, the, the uh, what's your name? Weaver, right, Brother Weaver. We, we went with us after just doing five months of deputation, and, and that was mostly prompted by the other pastors calling me, and not all, all together, but nevertheless, we went quickly. As we surrendered, the Lord just set wheels in motion, and we were thrust into it very quickly. But uh, we've been now in uh, Nigeria for about three years, and we're going to—we're we're finished with our latest furlough. First time that we've ever been at 100 percent, and we are ready to go back. We will be leaving two weeks from yesterday, about 13 more days. We'll be back in uh, in Nigeria. Nigeria is a country of about uh, over 196 million now, and it's about the size of Texas and Oklahoma. And uh, we, that we know of, there's only about, counting us, uh, four American missionaries over there working church planning and, and that kind of missionary work. Only four out of almost 200 million. And uh, so you can kind of see the need there. Uh, we are grateful for, we're the rookies there. The other ones have been there forever, you know. But uh, we praise the Lord for the opportunity to be missionaries in Nigeria, West Africa. We did not set up a table here. We are through with our furlough uh, Sunday night was our last time we, wrap, we wrapped it up, so we're ready to go back. Maybe three to four years before we could be in your church, but we would like at least the pastors to have prayer cards. We don't have a table to send you to to pick them up, but we'll have them here if you want a prayer card. Thank you very much. Please pray for us. There's lots of ways to die in Nigeria. And so please pray for us. Keep us safe. Amen. Thank you. Brother McGuffey yes. failed to tell you that his ministry has been and largely in the schools, where he's been going into the schools. And tell us, tell us about your school ministry and okay. how God opened the doors okay. where you could go into all those schools and okay. teach the gospel. Thank you. Praise the Lord. We are, uh, like most missionaries, we, we're, we're, we, we're kind of uh, ministered in three fronts, the soul winning and then the uh, church planning and then uh, training nationals. And, and that's pretty common. But... Uh, for soul winning there, uh, an unusual culture and, and the, the environment that we found ourselves in, we found the best way to do it is to get in the uh, government and private schools and present an evangelistic program where we focus on the blood and uh, give them clear gospel presentation and uh, a real uh, meaningful, real uh, uh, invitation. And uh, then my wife teaches a missionary story, and we do that in a little about, about a, a one hour or less program. We've never been turned down. What we will do is tap on a gate of a school and say we'd like to talk to the principal. And uh, that's okay. And they take us to the principal, and we'll talk to the principal. So we'd like to do our program in your school. And they say, what kind of program? We tell them because we want them to know up front. Uh, we don't want there to be any confusion. We are, it's going to be purely evangelistic, and we're there to try to win them to Christ. 
They usually will separate out the Muslims and the Catholics and let us have just the Protestants. And uh, what happens is we do our program, we'll see the Muslims sneaking back in and the Catholics sneaking back in. And we've, we've preached to as many in the school. The largest school in 2018 was about 750. We saw about half of that number saved, and a good number were Muslims. And so we have Muslims saved over there almost every week that we're there. And so, uh, but the school ministry is our means of, of soul winning, and uh, we are having a lot more people saved than we can ever disciple. But we're going to be planting a church eventually, not right away, but once we get back over there, that's the reason why we needed to be 100% fully supported, is that planting a church ourselves is going to take up a lot of time, and, and a lot of our money will be all spoken for. But, but, uh, but without a church, I don't know how we can do the discipleship. And so please pray for us on that. What do we do if we can't disciple them? Just we let them go to hell? I think we win them. And then do the best we can to create a need for God to raise up people that can help us disciple. And that's what we're doing. That's kind of the focus. Amen. So thank you, brother. Amen. Good afternoon. Markandang Umaga. Uh, my name is J.B. Tarwater. I'm going to be a missionary uh, to the Philippines. I've already been there a couple times. I'm from Cross and Crown Baptist Church in Cantonment, Florida, where I've spent the last 25 years as a children's preacher bus ministry, VBS, all those things. Uh, I, I uh, will be working in the areas of Alongapo and Subic Bay. If you know anything about that, we had a military base there for years, and there's lots of street kids and orphan kids there. They're all over the place. There's 1.5 million, by the way, in that country. And so I'm going to be going there. I'll be training uh, uh, in seminary, get pastors, local pastors from there, in the independent fundamental Baptist church plants, and then helping them reach out into the community. And that's what I'll be doing. I do not have uh, a table or anything, but if you'd like to pick one of these up, please. I just started on deputation. I'm in the middle of my second mission conference right now, and so I have to leave right now and go there. But uh, if you would, please, I'll be happy to come and present the ministry to you. There is a great need there, and it is open. It's part of that 1040 window where over 90% of the people have not been evangelized with the gospel. And these, these people are open. In fact, the president there uh, has just... He's not a born-again believer, but he just declared January the church Bible month, and people will flock out. And so, but the children will come by the droves, just thousands of them. You can get them just hundreds at a time, and they'll come and hear the gospel with just a little, you give them a piece of bread, a little juice box, and you can give them Bibles too. And that's why I'm here. Number one is to, pre to let you all know the need. It's there. Number two is we need Bibles. Amen. So, all right? Amen. God bless you all. Thank you for going. God bless you, sir. Hi, my name is Jack Bachman. I'm with Lone Star Baptist College in Mesquite, Texas, the 196th country in the world. And uh, we are excited to be with Dr. Mike Wells, who's been now, now for nine years at that church and uh, able to get the school up and running. The Lord is blessing. And our school uh, had a 33% increase in enrollment uh, two years ago. We built a dormitory building. It is now completely full with waiting list, and I have building permits on my desk to start more dormitories. So we're thanking the Lord for its growth. We are in a dearth of independent fundamental Baptist colleges. And so I'm excited for any college that's trying to train young people for the ministry. And we don't mix bones about what we are or why we're there. Uh, we are there to train soul winning servants for the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord's given us a good group of young people that are doing that. And also through IWWE, uh, which Brother Wells has had for about 15 years now, we go into uh, Philippines, Cambodia, Thailand, uh, India, uh, Africa, and uh, Korea and uh, into several countries every year with teams and preach in the schools like these men have talked about and then train national pastors and soul winners there. And the Lord has opened many doors for us there and uh, our mission students uh, get to experience the mission field and help in these uh, missions trips that we do as well as training there at Parkside Baptist Church and the many ministries that we have there. Do you have it in brochures on your... Yes, sir. I have a table back there uh, in the other building, and uh, we have brochures about the college there and some information that you can pick up and be more than happy to share that information with you. And uh, the Lord is, is blessed in a great way, the church, as well as the college. Uh, when Brother Wells came about nine years ago, they run about 250, and now we run about 900. You, uh, you're doing something that needs to be done. We need to pray for this, brother, and for the college, because a lot of colleges have closed up. Yes, sir. And, there's, and we need we need we need more colleges, and we need to be training the pastors and preachers and missionaries. Yes, thank you. Yes, sir. God bless you. Let's see, we have. Uh, 
Hey, we are Buddy and Mary Perrier. We served for 30 years in the Navy and we retired. And we thought we would spend our time with 15 grandchildren, but God had other plans. He's laid on our hearts to do a ship-based ministry in the Caribbean. We want to go do Bible distribution. Wherever the boat goes, Beam's Bibles will go. We want to do medical help, and we've teamed up with Operation Renewed Hope. Jan Milton is the director. He will be doing medical clinics, dental clinics, and IA clinics throughout the uh, Caribbean and coastal regions of Central America, and then do disaster relief. When you see the hurricanes come and hit the U.S., it's when you hear about it, but many, many times the islands are devastated by storms, and we have the ability to carry large amounts of equipment, food, and water, to go and help and be there long term to help with the recovery process. We've located the boat. We're in the process of raising money to buy it. I only need to raise another $100,000, and the Lord is a blessing. We are planning tentatively to do the first trip next February. We are stepping out by faith to do the impossible. Pray for us, and we would love the opportunity to present the ministry in your church. Thank you. Over here on this side. Missionaries on this side, okay? Oh, here's one right here. I'm sorry, man. Anybody up here? <laughs> Amen. Thank you, Amen. Thank you Brother Ben. Amen. My name is Brother Benjamin Laird. I am a fourth generation minister. I grew up on the mission field in Chile, South America. My parents were there, and that's where I spent all my growing up years. Sister Alice June Rogers, which Mr. Frieda's aunt, yeah. was mamaw to me. They, uh -huh. Even though they weren't kin, they were related and they became family. So I understand the mission work. Then I came home to the States, went to work in business, worked as an executive for several years, and then the Lord called me to preach, pastor churches for about 23. In the last five years, he called me to be a personal minister to Jesus. He said, what do you mean? Well, Jesus said when he was hungered and thirsty and when he was in prison and he was sick, you visited me. And God's called me to, won't be as exotic as being out in the foreign fields, but he's called me to serve in nursing homes and among the homeless and in the prisons. And the nursing homes, I go in and play music, and that kind of gets them out in their wheelchairs to come hear what's going on, these old hymns, and then have an opportunity to preach to them. A lot of places, they come in and just do a little devotional, but they won't preach in. And so I'll preach, and some that haven't heard it in a long time will just begin to weep. Because I hadn't heard preaching like that in years, and and thank you so much. And some have never heard it. And I grew up in church all my life, never heard anything like this. And we've had people saved from age 40 all the way up to 100-year-old. I had a 100-year-old man got saved. He died at 105, and what a blessing. Then in the prisons, I'm able to go in and evangelize and also teach fatherhood classes through the educational system, which is a blessing. Many of these men never had a father, don't know what it's like. And so God has given us that privilege to teach his word. And then with the homeless, we just do on a case-by-case -case basis. We keep sleeping bags, blankets uh, food, water, just anything I can hand out to someone to open the door to witness to them. Seen people, of course, the majority is drug addiction, alcoholism, some PTSD, but I've seen the Lord save people and change them from all of that, and what a blessing it is. And I don't come seeking support except of your prayers. I stepped out in faith a few years ago and haven't asked for one bit of support, and guess what? The Lord's taking care of 100%. Brother Weaver, I know where you're coming from. Amen. I know that's not the way everybody, but it's just the way the Lord lays it on my heart to do it, and that's what I've done, and he's supported us, and what a blessing it's been. But I do cover your prayers. Brother Gibbs put something on my heart. Uh, I've had some things that I really want to do. In my mind, I wasn't capable, but I know God is. And i uh, got some big visions of some things. There's some shelters. There's some need in our area. And I'm praying for some impossible things to happen. Covet your prayers. Thank you. I want to say, first of all, I'm glad I'm saved. You know, heaven's my home. My sin's been forgiven. I want to say thank you, Brother Fred, for inviting us to come and being able to be part of the Beams Conference. I can remember the first time I was here it was just after a hurricane. Uh, Brother Ferret could not buy any shingles or anything like that in this area, and uh, he put out a plea, and we were able to respond. The shingles that you've seen on the Beams buildings there were shingles that we were able to supply for the ministry, and that's when we kind of got to know about Beams. God called me to mission field uh, as a result of a few good men. Um, Brother Jim Brown was my mentor. He took me to India and the Philippines, and I understood the concept of how national pastors needed to be equipped, supplied, educated. My son David married Amanda, 
so he's got a brown in the family, but uh, we, I'm glad to be here. My pastor introduces me as Brother Mike Coop, a seasoned missionary. He just said that just last Sunday, and the lady said, oh, wow, she was really excited, and that was a scary thing for me because anything seasoned in, a, in Louisiana, I don't know if that's good or bad, <laughs> but uh, I took it as a compliment, and uh, we are, we've been to the Caribbean islands. I, I actually started a work in Dominica. Uh, we, were, we respond to, the, I guess is what I am, as a church planner and a first responder to disaster relief. I've uh, been in Dominica for six years, planted a church there, started the Faith Bible Institute, trained some men, turned that work over to a national pastor. Uh, that national pastor went through a Category 5, that pastor in church went through Maria, Category 5 storm. Maria hit there before it hit anything else completely wiped out our village. We just recently got electricity in our village, but we watched a, a young man rise up and lead a church through this disaster. We were able to supply him and equip him. I use aviation through the islands. I'm a, I'm a missionary with an airplane. I don't have an aviation ministry, although we have brought Beams Bibles. When I left here in January 2012, Brother Butch loaded my plane full of Beams Bibles, and uh, I tell you, it was amazing to be able to get those. That was an anniversary year for the King James Bible, beautiful Bibles that we were able to spread out through the Caribbean island, and since that day, Beams has been still sending our churches Bibles out there. Matter of fact, when I go into the post office, well, I could preach. When I go into the post office, the customs agents know what's in my box. Well, they know what that is, and that's a good thing. But I'm here to tell you today that I love Lord. We're still, we're in a transition. We turned that work over to a national. That national now is doing a wonderful job. I was just there last week, had the opportunity to lead three people to the Lord and baptize them, was over in, in Dominican Republic. I trained a man in, in Haiti after the earthquake in Haiti. We, dis, we responded to that disaster, uh, got to train some men, put that man through Bible college, Pastor Lenny Fenichu's Bible college there in Haiti, went and preached his graduation, helped him start a church in Dominican Republic. Since that time, he started two churches, now has a Christian school. I was just there, over 100, 100 children in that school. My wife and I, because we've been displaced out of the islands, we are now in Puerto Rico. Uh, during the, the, I flew uh, 27 mission flights into Puerto Rico with disaster relief supplies to missionaries, pastors, uh, help churches. Uh, one, of the church, one of the schools that we helped was a deaf school. Uh, when we got there with supplies, the children, the school was in just dire relief. She said that we could open that center as a disaster relief hub. Currently today, now we have taken over that property. We actually are basing our ministry out of uh, La Quillo, Puerto Rico. We can house about 30 people in that area. We're right down the street from the naval base. We have, we have a twin engine airplane there that we're continuing to use through the islands serving Jesus. Our primary focus now is working with primarily the deaf, 140,000 deaf people in Puerto Rico alone, but there's deaf scattered throughout those islands. And how shall they hear without a preacher? Uh, this young man, I don't know, last night I had the opportunity to interpret for Daryl. When I sat down beside Daryl in sign language, he asked me, do you know Jesus Christ as your Savior? That's what he asked me. I said, absolutely, I know him. And he said, man, not one day. He started sharing his testimony, how the Holy Spirit of God convicted his heart and that he's saved. He called me this afternoon to ask me if I'd interpret for him tonight. Praise God. Somebody's going to hear about Jesus. Amen? Amen. We're asking the big. We're asking, we're asking the impossible from the Lord. And uh, you pray for us. We are here. I'm here primarily. I'm filling a schedule fast to be able to get into our supporting churches. And thank you for your support. However, we are asking for your support. My wife and I don't have any other income except for, for the faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and the church that has sent us out. And so you pray for us. God bless you. Amen. Thank you, Brother Coop. Let's give these missionaries a hand of appreciation for coming, being here today. Uh, Brother Nottingham, come up here just a minute if you would. I want to introduce you to the missions coordinator of Faith Baptist Church. Uh, some years ago, brother, we had Brother Mike uh, Mizell. Brother Mike Mizell started a program within our church called a missionary program, and I'm going to 
ask Brother Nottingham to explain to you what, what the purpose is for this missionary club. Would you do that, Brother Sure. Nottingham? Yes, sir. Well, it's a great uh, blessing to be here with you, and I wish we could support every missionary. Uh, uh, we're asking for the impossible. I always want to support one more. But uh, the, the Missions Club started by uh, Mike Mizell, and I can't remember what church he got the, the concept from, so it's not, it wasn't original to Mike, but he made it uh, a, a great thing in this church, and that is simply, uh, you know, we, we have uh, 53 missionaries that we support out of our church, and it, the idea was to team up uh, a family within the church with a missionary that would pray for them and from time to time send a gift to them on the mission field. Some, some, some missionaries, you, you all know this better than I do, sometimes they, they want things, sometimes they don't, sometimes they can get M&Ms, sometimes they can't or whatever it is that that's their favorite thing and the idea was that that missionary, that, that church family would be paired up with them and be able to meet maybe a special need they have, not, not provide great things to them but let them know they're being prayed for uh, let them give them something they maybe need be a real blessing to them and so in, in that way our missions club not only um, helps make sure missionaries know what support they're getting or that they're that, that they're being prayed for but it, more than anything it speaks to our members about the needs that missionaries have and the reality that you know, what a blessing it is that there are missionaries that have given up so much here in the u.s to go someplace that is by all means forsaken by the U.S. standards, how blessed we truly are here in the United States to have uh, five Bibles on my, on my coffee table and two more in my car and one in my jacket. You know, we really are blessed here. And that our missionaries have needs. Quite often it may be some, some M&Ms or a Kit Kat bar, but so, so much more it's just simply prayer. And so it's been a great opportunity to lead that organization and get our church involved in and simply praying and understanding what the needs of our missionaries are. So uh, if you have more questions about what that is, I'll be here tonight and, and uh, would love to talk to you about that. I'll be here tomorrow as well. Um, but uh, it's a great thing for churches to, to do to, to link their, uh, their members with missionaries and really understanding what the needs are out there. Thank you, Dr. Like Frank. Yes, sir. Uh, one, one thing I appreciate about the Missionary Club, you, you correct me on this, but I understand that the members of the club take different missionaries and pray for them all month long. Right, so, um, and that, that's kind of the, the contract, if you will, that you make when you take up a missionary. And we, I've tried to get our, our missions club people to kind of rotate through so they can learn about another missionary, but quite frankly, our, our church members, they get kind of attached to the missionary and they want to keep, they just, they don't want to give them up. So now, you know, if someone wants to, if we want to have, you know, multiple people paired up with a missionary, I'll allow that and different things. But, um, yeah, so that's, that is one of the primary goals is to be praying for our missionaries, make sure there's somebody that's dedicated to praying for that person. So every missionary that, that we support out of our church, there's somebody praying for every one of those missionaries. All we, month. we have, a, we have a couple missionaries that don't have prayer partners right now, but uh, we're always looking for uh, another church member to take them on. Thank you. Yes, sir. It. If you have any more questions, Brother Nottingham would be glad to meet with you. All right, let's stand, please. I appreciate the reports that we've heard today. I hope, pastors, that you'll consider some of these that's been presented. You know, it's refreshing to see as many as we've seen here today. Because uh, we're not seeing people surrender to the mission field like we used to see. I go to mission conferences, and we'll have maybe one or two missionaries there, but nobody surrenders. And we need to pray that God will raise up more laborers for the mission field. Brother Stark, I love you, buddy. Come on back up, Tony Stark. Come up and lead us in our prayer.